Soul Weekend Warriors, welcome back to the workshop. Today what we're going to talk about is a rotary screen holder. Surprise! Um, actually what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at a mistake I made when I designed it and built it to begin with. We are going to actually build a set of racks. Uh, we're going to make a tool or a, a tool accessory to help us make these things. So you don't have to have a big garage full of tools like I have. If you've got some of the simple tools from way back in episode one, when I talked about the small shop, um, you'll be able to do whatever I'm doing today straight from that, that bucket of tools. Um, and that's it. Yeah. So, so look at a mistake, build a, a tool accessory and then build a screen or rotary screen holder. So let's get on. Let me show you the mistake and show you the solution and we'll be right along. So hang on. Okay, so here's our rotary screen holder. And you see all the twirly bits are still the same. I still got the nice heavy duty base. And as I was, I was uh, doing the plans for this in SketchUp last weekend so I could get them up on the website, I realized that my mistake is this big old heavy duty base. It is, unless you are, oh, hell and gone from, from any kind of a hardware store and all you have is wood, then this is terrific. However, it's not necessary because one little piece of hardware will replace this big old sturdy base. So this one for me now goes back to the recycling so I can recycle the bits and pieces. Not much more I'm going to be able to do with uh, that base, though. It's been through a couple different designs already. So that goes away. And now we're going to look at that piece of hardware right there. That is a simple three-quarter inch floor flange bought from the plumbing department at Home Depot. I think it costs $4.50. I think it's even less expensive over at my local hardware store, uh, the Do It Center, but they were closed when I went to pick the thing up. Anyway, uh, that thing has, has all the strength and sturdiness of all that wood that I had, and it's much simpler to install. So let me do a quick back out here. Okay, I'm gonna pop my little clamp off the back so I can just grab this thing and move it. Okay, um, it installs with four bolts through the top. In this case, they're uh, they're like wood screws, so they'll they'll mount flush. And then the bottom is just recessed nuts and washers to, to hold the bolts in place. As you see, I've Played around with this this base. This is recycled from that old style uh, screen holder. But yeah, four nuts, four washers with the four bolts, recessed so it sits flat, and the rest of it remains the same. That's so easy. We're not going to bother going through the uh, through the tasking of, of rebuilding that since it's already done. So, for the purpose of this video, we're going to build the twirly bits here. We're going to build ourselves the, the, uh, the screen supports that act as spacers also. And, uh, like I said, we're going to build a tool to help us do all these. So, before we can do anything, we should get our plans. So, let's go back in the office and download the plans from the internet. All right, as you see, we're sitting at my computer desktop at the moment. So we're in the office. First thing I'm going to do here is come over to uh, Google Chrome, bring up Crafted by Christopher, and we want to go to our Projects and Plans section. I can do it here. I can do it here. It really doesn't matter. And from there, I'm going to go to Screen Printing Equipment. And from there, I'm going to go to the Rotary Screen Holder. You see brand new tab up here click on that ignore the video because we're actually filming the video that belongs here let's go to the plan and we have downloaded over here in the corner the rotary screen holder zip file or rsh.zip 
Let's open that bad boy up. Now you can see I've got different file types here. I've got two PDFs that will give us scale uh, depictions of our uh, rack side and the stretchers that go in between. And I've got the SketchUp version also. So you can get the uh, scale template off any of the three of these. So I'm going to just go to the SketchUp version. Now this is using SketchUp 2017 or SketchUp Make as you see up here in the corner. It's free to use as long as you're using it for your own purposes. Okay, bring that up. First thing that's going to, it's going to warn me that uh, I saved it in 1301, so if I save it again, it's not going to uh, be in the 1301 version, and I don't really care because I'm not saving anything. All right, first thing that's going to come up is the assembly drawing, and you see a assembled screen holder here, uh, complete with measurements on the stretchers. Okay, whoopie do. You've seen this in video, you've seen it in action. So let's go to one of the other tabs. Let's go to the stretcher. And when we open the stretcher, you see that there's the stretcher complete with measurements. Now the measurement to center is going to remain the same. The measurement for the center is kind of going to depend on the width of the pipe you're using. And I suggest measuring the pieces of pipe that you're using because I've got three three-quarter inch pieces out in the garage and they measure out slightly different each one so my average is 27 miller yeah 27 millimeters uh, yours may vary as far I've seen them vary as far down as uh, 25 and a half which is close to one inch but um, yeah so just be aware you may have to change this dimension slightly but you got the center mark uh, you can cut it, create a square, you can cut a, you know, use a compass, make a circle. Any way you look at it, those measurements are going to be the same. Now, yes, this is all in metric here, but the actual width of this piece is seven, and, or the actual length of this piece is seven and a half inches. The actual width is three inches. And if you go back and, and check the conversions, you'll find that those conversions are accurate. So what's the big deal here? Well, the big deal here is if I go to file and I go to print, I'll go to print preview instead. And I check, make sure the fit to page is deselected. Make sure use model extents is deselected. Check to see that your scale is one inch to one inch between the printout and SketchUp. This is going to ensure that you have a scale template when we're done. Hit OK and it's going to print and there's your scale template. So. If you don't just want to measure to get to center, you, you want to put a template down, there you have it. Then go to rack, and this is the one that's a little bit more important to have the template for because we have angles, we have a cutout that we have to do. Now this, since I didn't put the, the measurement on, this is actually a 10 degree angle going down. Um, and that's terrific and all. But if you throw the template down, you don't need it. All you have to do is cut on the lines, and it's going to come out right. And I'll show you that once we get back out to the workshop. So I'm going to go ahead and print a couple of these guys. I'm even going to print a stretcher. And then we'll head back out to the workshop, and we'll use them. So I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so we are now here with the blocks of wood we're going to need cut to size. Now, I know the plans are in metric, but basically the stretchers are seven and a half inch and the rack uh, ends are seven and a quarter inch. Both of them are three inches wide, right? Over here, I have the, the sheets that we just printed out. There's for the stretcher, there's for the rack. So to prepare the wood, for the stretchers, I just went ahead and measured everything out and drew it in uh, using my straight edges, etc., etc. Um, so I, I measured out to the center, and then I measured 13 millimeters off to each side, drew my box, and then used my compass set up and drew a circle inside that box. And I did it on both of them. Now, for the rack ends... 
where we've got a real nice template here that even already has our angles figured out. This is about a 10 degree angle. I didn't put it on the sheet, but it's about a 10 degree angle. But since I got a template, I'm not worried about measuring out the angle or anything. All I did was cut the template out, use a little spray adhesive, and stuck the template in place. So basically, I'm all ready to cut here, at least my material is. However, before I can cut, I have to come over here and uh, make a table to hold my jigsaw. Now, I could do the jigsaw by hand from the top, but I always end up getting off and, and stuttering and, and stuff like that. But when I've got the jigsaw locked in place and I'm manipulating the material, everything always goes smoother for me. So, here I have just a piece of 3 8 inch plywood. Uh, this is about 12 by 10 or 10 by 12, however you want to look at it. And to get started making the table, all I did was first take my jigsaw, lay it flat into, on the, the sheet, and I took a pencil, holding the jigsaw down, and I drew the outline of the jigsaw base all the way around, including the little cutout here for the blade. And then I took my straight edge, and I extended those lines all the way up and down. And then, of course, all the way across. Since I knew where it was going to be, and I knew how thick the stock I was going to use to create my frame, I went ahead and drew in that thickness, you know, another set of lines parallel to the outline of the saw. And then it was just a simple matter of, I've got a forward block and a rear block and two side blocks. These just frame up, frame up the saw so it can't go anywhere uh, when I set it in. So it just gives me the same reference over and over and over again. Uh, these, I just basically threw down some hot glue, stuck them in place, and then for the forward and the rear, I put some screws in the other side. And I, I used my countersink and recessed them, as I did for four more sections on the sides. And those four sections get lock blocks. Now, let me move a, this up to the camera a little bit here so you can get a better look. You see the lock block, it's, it's just a piece of quarter inch or three quarter inch uh, pine. You know, it's about three quarters by one inch. And then, I don't know one and a quarter inch long, something like that. Whoops, how about if I bring it down to the camera so you can see it. So three quarter inch wide, or thick, an inch wide, maybe an inch and a half, inch and a quarter long. Just took a handsaw and cut a slot. And what is that, maybe a quarter inch deep in it? Because that's gonna, that, that slot there is gonna grab the frame of the saw and then because I've already drilled a hole for it. Let's see, this one's number two. Number two goes up here. It's gonna fit right in there and hold the saw in place. And of course it screws into place with just a plain old wood screw, nothing fancy. And then the forward stop block, I also notched out so I could get to the screw that uh, allows me to change the blade in the saw. So now it's just a matter of putting the saw in, and getting the blocks in the right places. So forward, forward, we'll start with number two, since I had number two in my hand already. Got to get the screw back in. Once I've got the screw back in, I can find the screw hole in the block and screw it into place. There we go. And now, if you will remember back when I did that very first video, if you've ever watched that very first video, where I described the basic tools you needed for a small shop or for a space limited shop. Not only did I mention a jigsaw, but I also said something about a workmate. 
Black & Decker Workmate, one of the greatest tools known to mankind. And I know we made a Hirsch saw table and all that, but because uh, I have so many saws and everything, my Hirsch saw table is now the table I use for screen printing on. All right. So the reason I was mentioning the Workmate is that's where that goes. Because you'll notice the forward and the rear stop blocks are the whitest thing on the, on the whole uh, jig here. And that's because the workmate is going to clamp to these and turn it into a scroll saw table for me. So hang on, I'll put the blade in, all that. You'll get to see how it works because we're going to cut these guys out on the uh, using our jigsaw. Stand by. Okay. Now it's time to do some cutting. Now you see in the stretcher, I used a Forstner bit and I cut out just two sections out of the middle. It's a lot easier to use the drill than uh, the saw for everything and it gives me some maneuverability for the saw blade. Now for the rack side, uh, it's all straight cuts. So basically I'm going to make a cut down the edge and then down the other edge and I'm going to make a couple of crossways cuts just to clear the space out and then I'll cut the back end and I'll do that on both ends and then if I do that neat enough and square enough on this one I can use this as the template on the other one so let's see how it goes halfway there and I think I did a good enough job on this piece that I can use this as the template for the other side so I'm gonna cut that all out and I'll be back okay we are almost done uh, with the jigsaw scroll saw scroll saw or jigsaw with a scroll saw adapter whatever you want to call this tool but before we finish up we've got to make the the uh, screen support or the rack support which we do out of one inch PVC. Now you see the, the line there. We're going to cut along the solid line. That's about three quarter inches down from the end. And after we cut that piece off, we need to slot it so it can stretch and go over the piece of pipe. And we do that with this neat little jig here. Now you see this guy has got two holes uh, drilled through it. And then I ran it down the uh, scroll saw. Just to join up those two holes, give me a straight line to work with, or a straight-ish line to work with. And then it's got a backer on it to hold the uh, piece of pipe in place so I don't cut my fingers up. Of course, I haven't had a major scroll saw incident yet, uh, as opposed to table saw or band saw. But let's see how it goes. Now, we're not going to get greedy. First, we're going to do a score along the line, and then we're going to go ahead and cut it across. So let's start with that.
forgot last time I did this, I used a thicker blade, so it was a much easier cut. This one I put a thinner blade in so I could cut those sharp angles a little bit easier. So now I've got my piece cut. Now it's just a matter of sticking it in there. I got a nice clean cut there. Uh, yeah, I could have used a handsaw to do that part, but what's the fun of having power tools if you don't use them for a lot of different stupid things? Okay, so we are now done with this tool. We've got our screen support made. Now all I have to do is put a, uh, a hose clamp around there and stick the washer on top and it's ready to go. So now let's get all this stuff put together. Okay, I'm ready to assemble the, uh, the screen rack or the actual holder itself. Uh, and that's pretty easy. Now, you can use clamps and stuff, but for the sake of the video and time, I'm going to pin nail everything together after I get the glue on it. So, the first thing you want to do is set it up just to make sure you got the angles going the right direction on both sides. And then if you put the template on, of course, you don't want to try to glue to the paper, so we're going to glue to the other side. I've marked center line on both sides of the stretcher, so I've got the center line there, and I've got a little nick mark down here. And I've got center line on all the sides, or all the edges, of the, uh, of the rack, or the rack side, I should say. So, it's just a matter of lining things up gluing it up and shooting it together. If I was doing a bunch of these, I wouldn't be using my finger because that just gets too sticky after a while. Okay, get those lines lined up. Now just stick a couple of brads. Gonna do the other same thing on the other side. Of course my compressor will choose that moment to go off. Okay, make sure I've got my jaws up, just like I do on that side. And we're halfway there. Once again, I've got the edge marked with center, so I know where I'm going with this one. I just got to get it there. And there we have it, a complete rack. Now let's get a base going. Let's, uh, let's put the spacer in and let's watch it twirl around. Hang on. All right, time to assemble it. Now, I went ahead and recycled this base one more time. This was the base from the, the wooden support. So I 
put on another uh, floor flange. Here's my piece of pipe. So in he goes. It's nice and tight. Not going to wobble out and go anywhere on me. Let's see here. Here's the one we just made. Let me make sure I'm putting it on the right way. And while I'm at it, I made one off, off camera. I also ran out of uh, hose clamps. So for the purposes of what we're doing here, I'm just going to use a zip tie. It actually worked pretty good. Not like I'm putting a whole ton of pressure on the uh, on the screen supports or on the holder supports, rack supports, whatever you want to call the support. Another, oops, another use use for a bicycle fourth hand tool. Tightening down zip ties. Can't find my little cutter, so let's use the big ones. Oops. All right, had to move the camera a little bit, but here it is. Once again, I threw a clamp onto it because, of course, when I put the base on, I didn't put a wide enough base on. But as you see, it's doing all the twirling and all the, the screen holding and keeps these things up out of the way and we're fine and dandy with them. And there we have it. We've made a rotary screen, rotary screen holder from leftover pieces in the garage. We've improved the, the base of it so we don't have to go through all kinds of angle cutting and, and assembling and, and it's just four bolts and we're ready to go. Um, we've added a tool to our tool catalog so we've got an adapter for our, our scroll saw or our jigsaw, whichever kind of saw it was. Um, so I'd say today was a fairly productive day. Oh, here goes the door. It's a real windy day today, so I couldn't have gone out and ridden my bike anyway. So at least we got something done that was productive. So until I see you next time, you guys keep up the good fight and have a good weekend. Bye.